So what was the, in your mind, what was the biggest game or the most important game that you ever played in college? Oddly enough, looking back, my freshman year, the Texas game on Thanksgiving night in 1987 was for the conference championship. Yeah. And, and we ended up winning the game 20 to 13. But looking back with just what was a conference championship was all on the line. Yeah. That was a pretty big game in all the games I played. Looking back, all the Texas games are big. Of course, the bowl games are big. Your conference games are big. But I'm not sure I played in another game that had that much ramifications to it, if you will. So that was a big one for sure. And when I was too young to even really comprehend <laughs> what was really – going on I appreciate it so much more now because I tell eight-year-olds and I tell 60-year-olds it's hard to win a championship at yep. any level in any sport and don't take it for granted when you win one because you might not ever get another opportunity and uh, so that was a big deal we ended up winning the conference championship again my senior year which was a lot of fun and but all the Texas games were big games for us, the rivalry of that. And, uh, and beating Texas, I don't care whether they were up or whether they were down. Yeah. It, it was a battle. And Texas obviously one of the most storied college football programs ever. Mm -hmm. And so to go beat those guys, it, whether we're number two in the country or they're number two in the country, it, it was – there were multiple games where there were upsets in those games. Oh, yeah. That doesn't surprise me to hear that. Well, let me ask you, you said something just now about not really appreciating the kind of the significance of that game. And you were, like I said, you were one of those really popular players, but before social media. And so mm -hmm. nowadays, instead of getting letters from disgruntled fans when you committed to A&M you'd get tweets or Facebook comments or stuff like that so what was it like being so popular and and so well loved at least by the Aggies you're probably hated by some of the other teams yeah. but, but, yeah. but what was it like as a young kid as a 19 20 21 year old kid having to deal with all that instant notoriety and fame it, it the, the the Aggie Nation has been so kind to me through the years, over the years, when I was playing and after my football was over. It's great. I, I just – it's such a compliment. It, it's so humbling when somebody walks over to you, even today, and wants to take a picture with you or wants you to take a picture with their children or just wants to shake your hand. To me, it, it, it's the most humbling thing in the world. It, 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 it makes me appreciate how much people care about their team and about their players. And it's, I don't really know another way to describe it. It's the ultimate compliment. Yeah. And that's the way I've always taken it. I never say no. I always have time. Uh, because I know for a lot of people, it takes a lot of courage to walk over to somebody you never met and introduce sure. yourself. And so I've been that way to other people too. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Not Bucky Rich. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny you'd I, say I that because I tell you, you and I played golf uh, this gosh, this is probably five or six years ago. I played with a friend of ours, Dale Jefferson. I texted yeah. my dad's sister. My dad's. Class 65, granddad's class 38. My dad was a walker on the football team, huge Aggie. And his sister, I texted my dad. I said, hey, I'm playing golf with Bucky right now. He goes, oh, cool. And he told his sister, and she started texting me. She goes, oh, my God, Bucky, I can't believe you're playing with Bucky Richardson. Oh, my, tell him I said hi. <laughs> that kind of thing. But it's, I, can you imagine being 
somebody like Johnny Manziel or Ken yeah. Newton or one of these guys in the age yeah. of social media where every single thing you do gets filmed and tweeted and Facebook. These yeah. guys are under a tremendous amount of pressure. And sometimes I think we lose sight of the fact, Bucky, that they're still kids. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm, I'm grateful and thankful we didn't have that stuff back when we were, we were in school. It's so hard growing up already. Yeah. Just trying to figure things out and growing up and trying to stay out of trouble. And this just kind of makes it easier for kids to get in a bad spot. And uh, it's a whole nother set of issues that children have to deal with that, that we didn't. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it was like our era was just a lot simpler, it seemed, like, yeah. in a lot of ways. The on-the-field stuff and the actual playing the sport and doing all that's very comparable. But it's just off the field, managing what you're saying and doing and where you're going off the field is it brings that to, to the surface real quick. And a lot of kids can handle it and do handle it. And a lot of kids struggle with it. And we see it every day. Yeah. We see it every day. For sure. And as the quarterback of a major division one school, mm -hmm. you're going to take the credit for the wins and you're going to get the criticism for the losses, whether it's true or not. That's just part of being in that position, generally speaking. So were you one of those athletes that would look at the press clippings, the negative and positive, or would you just ignore all that stuff when you were playing? I tried to ignore it. I, I just cared about winning. And when we didn't win, I took it as hard or harder than anybody. Yeah. And, and quarterbacks, that position, you're right. A lot of times we get singled out and probably get more credit than we deserve. And on the other side, too, we might get a little bit more criticism when, we, when we're not successful. But that's part of the position. And that's part of what we talked about a little earlier, touched on a little earlier, is being able to handle that criticism, being able to see somebody write something that you know is not true or not accurate or, again, that's just his opinion. And how does that affect you? Do you let it affect you? Yeah. And uh, that's part of the mental toughness that it takes to play the next play, go to the next day, practice harder the next day, just continue to try to improve. And you're not going to make everybody happy all the time. You're never going to make everybody happy. So you can't worry about it. Your family, your friends, your teammates is all I cared about. And I tell, uh, my, how kids, they I tell my kids all the time, Bucky, I said, if everybody likes you, you're probably not doing anything. Of, of importance you're, if you're doing right. anything that's important you're probably going to have some people that don't like you and right. and you're just going to Le leadership is not a popularity contest i love you know? that i love it yeah yeah because you're going to have to say i had a great relationship with all my linemen and but we held each other accountable yeah i would say things to them that they didn't like and they've said things to me that I didn't like, but yeah. that's part of respecting each other, trying to get the best out of each other. And it was some heated exchanges often, and but it was out of love, not criticism. And we're trying to win a game, win a battle. And uh, you got to be able to do that. 